Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. Um, For those who don't know who've been on my channel for a while, if it's one guy that I've always had reservations about defending or at least speaking upon, it was one Spike Lee. And I'm about to tell you guys why. Sometimes... You always have to ask this question, why now? Why 32 years later, you call yourself making this accusation? Now, in case you guys don't know, Spike Lee has recently came out and says that Bill Cosby stole the theme or basically, 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 the scenario from him when it comes to the popular comedy series, A Different World, you know, that ran from, um, well, it ran for a while. It ran for quite a few seasons. I can't exactly remember how many seasons it it ran, but it was a very popular show, in particularly among the uh, black community. Um, but... It originally starred Lisa Bonet. Basically, it was a spinoff of The Cosby Show. It was her own show with her going to college. And basically, you know, what happened was Lisa Bonet uh, got pregnant. You know, she got pregnant and basically, you know, among other things, you know, she got into it. Allegedly, she had, you know, uh, issues with Bill Cosby concerning the show and basically she left after one season now the fun funny part about it was after she left the ratings got better now the show had solid ratings it had good enough ratings to you you know get renewed for a second season but the ratings got even better it was a top five show for years and you know, the episodes are in syndication. You actually can look up some of the episodes on YouTube, but it was a great show. I grew up watching that show. You know, um, that's where people like Jada Pinkett got their start, you know, um, and the show touched on a lot of different subjects from, you, you know, um, a lot of different things from uh, date rape to colorism to racism to just a lot of different things. So it was very it was very helpful in me growing up. And of course it was produced by, you know, William H. Cosby, aka Bill Cosby, and we all know the situation with Bill Cosby, which leads to this video. Now, in case you guys don't know, Spike Lee, as I said earlier in the video, that he has accused Bill Cosby of stealing a different world from his 1988 film was it 88 or 89 um uh school days and school days basically tells the story of uh college students and it basically talks about the issue between darker blacks blacks and lighter blacks basically it's really surface around colorism colorism and blackness you know what i'm saying so it's it's a great movie it starred Lawrence fishburne um tisha campbell is in the movie uh you know uh a few people few people it was a very interesting movie spike lee even has a role in the movie he plays Lawrence fishburne's cousin so you know it's very uh interesting movie but like i said it centers really around um you know colorism now my thing is i don't know how that could relate to a movie about uh basically a black college you know now keep in mind marissa torme was on the first year of of um a different world and she basically left after one season I don't know whether she was fired or whether they just, you, you know, she just left. But they felt that they 
wanted to focus more on uh, black college life, you know. So with that being said. Um, it's just hard for me to understand the actions of Spike Lee. You know, at the end of the day, this is just more proof that black people can't stick together to save their fucking lives. Like I said, this nigga Spike Lee, all of a sudden, waited 30 plus years while Bill Cosby is in prison who can't defend himself to say that Bill Cosby stole from him. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but here's some little food for thought that a lot of people don't know. Like I told you, I had issues. I've told you on several occasions, I've had major issues with Bill Cosby on how he went about uh, reaching out to black people or lack of reaching out to certain black people. I feel to a certain degree Bill Cosby was smug and I felt like he didn't know how to reach out to certain type of people. And I felt like to a certain degree he was too self-righteous because like I said, I've had my issues with Bill Cosby just as well as I've had my issues with Spike Lee. I've had a lot of issues with Spike Lee. Because keep in mind, Spike Lee threw Allen Iverson under the bus when Allen Iverson made made um made a rap album and he didn't like Allen Iverson's uh you know street image so I had a lot of issues with Spike Lee I thought Spike Lee was going against the grain and I thought Spike Lee was a coon and Spike Lee has coon before because Spike Lee had it bad about talking about Spike Lee had it bad about talking about other black people to mix company but he would, but to a certain degree, he would try to disguise it by talking about um, Hollywood's lack of opportunity for black people. But then this is the same Spike Lee that tried to attack Eddie Murphy for Harlem Nights for basically um, for the screen time he gave Robin Harris. Oh, I gave Robin Harris a bigger role in uh, Mo Better Blues. Well, at the end of the day, Eddie Murphy put the man in the damn movie. He made sure the man got a check. Like I said before, um, Eddie Murphy didn't did a lot for the black community. Whether you like it or not, he didn't did a lot for black actors. And that, there's no denying. And I'm not going to hold that shot that he took at Bill Cosby against him like certain people did. You know, because like I said, Eddie Murphy is, did a lot for black people. You know, to a certain degree, he don't get enough credit. You know, so, you know, Eddie Murphy, just like any other uh, person in Hollywood, he didn't have his issues that he didn't have to deal with. So, I mean, that just happens. But I don't I don't have no real issues with Eddie Murphy. OK, because Eddie Murphy he have looked out for he have looked out for his people. That's fact. And you got more people that can verify it than go against it. So, you know, at the end of the day, you had this situation where it was either either you ride with Eddie Murphy or you ride with Bill Cosby. You know what I'm saying? Which to me, both of them should have tried to work together. But this one I've been saying about Spike Lee. Spike Lee got, like I said, Spike Lee, just like Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby had it bad about talking about other black people in front of mixed company. And you can't get around that because I could pull up the interviews where Bill Cosby would be going on these white uh, media outlets going in on black people. And the same with Spike Lee. You know, uh, the actor... Clifton Powell, he said something a few months ago that I agree with wholeheartedly that black people should never talk about each other in, in, in to white media. They just shouldn't. And Spike Lee and both Bill Cosby have been guilty of that. But for Spike Lee to, you know, basically kick Bill Cosby while he down, that's that's real weak. But I've always had reservations about, you know, su supporting Spike Lee because I thought he was disingenuous. 
And he showed it at times that he was. I felt at the time Spike Lee was a dude that would try to, I thought he was like what you call kind of like a fake pro-black dude. I just always saw things in Spike Lee that I didn't like that bothered me from some of the elements he would put in his films to, you know, you know, just certain things he would say. And the Allen Iverson thing just really rubbed me the wrong way when he was insinuating Allen Iverson should be suspended. You know what I'm saying? So Spike Lee is guilty of doing that. Now, in case you guys don't know, um, Spike Lee had to get uh, in, in investors to help him finish make, making Malcolm X because... Warner Brothers refused. Warner Brothers refused to give him any more money. Now it's it's a question of how much Malcolm X actually cost to make, and we already know that Warner Brothers did next to no job trying to promote the film. They basically wanted the movie to tank, which I don't think Malcolm X did very well at the theater for just a lot of different reasons. One, uh, the movie was incredibly long. The movie, you know. And sometimes that could just be a deal breaker. You know, the movie was over three hours. Now, I enjoyed the movie, but a lot of times people just don't want to sit through biopics for three hours. You know, usually when you make those type of films, you you might need to cut them down to at the very least. Like, I just think there is no reason for any movie to be three, three hours long. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I think at I think at best you should try to keep a movie maybe around the, the two two hour and forty minute mark, and that's kind of reaching. But nevertheless, nevertheless, Malcolm X didn't do. Uh, well, to me, I ain't going to say what they had expectations for it to do because I, they didn't really want to push the movie in the first place. So, you know, but nevertheless, Bill Cosby called up a gang of people, allegedly, but Bill Cosby helped get the movie completed. So that just goes to show you once again that we never on the same page. Never. Never. This nigga Spike Lee waited 30 something years to to say this shit. If that's the case, if you feel Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby stole a different world from you. Why did you accept his money? Because last time I checked, shout out to the great Nipsey Hussle. Malcolm X came out in 1992. And I think by 1992... A different world was into his third season, maybe. So why didn't you get at Bill Cosby about that right then and there? And as far as I'm concerned, and I'm going to just keep it on some hood shit. If Bill Cosby gave you money to get Malcolm X completed, then to me, he paid it for it. To me, you, you received some kind of residual. So... At the end of the day, man, I don't want to say fuck Spike Lee, but Spike Lee, you wrong. You wrong, man. This your boy Town Biz. I'm out.